Hi, Erika. Hi. Good Let morning. me start with human to human. Um, maybe people don't know you. Um, so can you tell us something about yourself? Who are you? Good question. Yeah. <laughs> Who am I? What a Who, question. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I'm Rika Koppens. Uh, I'm especially someone who likes humor. Uh, okay. so, uh, so I like to have a bit of fun. Uh, and I'm the CEO of House of HR. Yeah. Uh, and Accent Jobs is part of, uh, of House of HR. So maybe that is uh, more familiar to people, especially in Belgium. Uh, but in Holland, we also have subsidiaries like Covebo, Continue Redmore. In Germany, we have Time Partner and Zaquensis. And yeah. in France, we have Abilsen. So that's uh, sounds like a big group. How 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 big is the group? Uh, today we are about 1.8 billion uh, euros in turnover, uh, and we have about 3,000 people, more than 3,000 people internally working for us. But actually, we employ because that's our business, a uh, house of HR. We staff people. Uh, we are in, in human resource, uh, yeah. uh, so uh, we staff about 50,000 people a year. That's. Um Quite a lot. That's yeah. a crowd. Uh, uh, before we go into the yeah. company, um, you said you like humor. Um, if I would ask you, what, what, what's that, that part of you that you think, okay, this is really me? Is that the humor or is that something else? Is that something that you say, this is really my characteristic? Uh, very outspoken, very outgoing, um, and the humor is part of it. So yeah. uh, I will always speak my mind. Uh, sometimes people find that very confronting, uh, but uh, I am uh, what you see. So, yeah. Um, yeah. so that's uh, that's me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Flemish people would say you're very Dutch. I'm yeah. very Dutch. Very Some Dutch. people suspect that actually I'm Dutch yeah. in a way. But you're so not. I'm not. I'm okay. not. I'm yeah. really, really Flemish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, House of HR. Um, you already you already said something about it, House of HR, but maybe uh, introduce House of HR. What is House of HR, and um, what makes you or House of HR different from? other people in the same space or mm -hmm. other companies in the same space. Yeah. So House of HR, we're a group of staffing companies. And, and what we have in common is that uh, we change lives one job at a time. This is what we say. Um, so because having a job is for me one of the most important things in life. And I think everyone experienced it as well coming out of this crisis that having colleagues, being able to see your colleagues, speak to colleagues, how important that is in your life. Yeah. I mean, we all worked during the crisis, but actually what we missed really we was missed also... We missed the work environment. Yes, yeah, exactly. uh, and people yeah. wanted to come out again and come outside and, and go to work and meet the colleagues. So that's how important work is. I yeah. think if you are at the reception um, and you talk to people, the first question is, what's your name? The second question is, what do you do for a living? Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's how important work is. So this is one of our uh, missions is to, to change lives one job at a time. So this is what we all have in common. Um, and I think this is also where it starts from. So we don't say we want to be number one in staffing or we want to place most people. No, we want to... It's about the mission. It's about the mission. Yeah. Uh, and really find that perfect match for a human being that they find the job they love, um, which is also choose the job you love. It's very human to human. Yes, yeah. indeed. Um, it's, it's a human business. Um, what makes us different is that we start from that mission, uh, especially we don't want to be the biggest. We don't want to be the greatest. We just want to be the best in that, uh, in that matchmaking. So we have a very personalized um, way of working, yeah. uh, both towards the candidates, towards the people looking for a job, as towards the customers where we are trying to be a good fit with them, getting to know them, be really a partner in their growth path that they have uh, set in front of them. You have, you said customers, but you have actually, you have two types of customers. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, that's why I refer to the first one as being the candidates. Huh? Yeah. They are our customers as well. Yeah. Uh, so that's the B2C part in yeah. a way. And then we have the B2B part, which is the uh, customers, the companies that are looking uh, for people to help them out. This is what you do. You match matchmaking. Matchmaking. All yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. Connie, our founder, uh, who some people may know, uh, she always says we're actually like a dating agency, okay. uh, which is one of her dreams to start a dating agency yeah. at some yeah. point. So I'm uh, going to ask you a very difficult question. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think that, and, and let's, part, let's talk about your customers now, business to business part, but I'll come back to mm -hmm. the business to consumer part. What would your customers miss if House of HR would not be there? 
It's a very good question. Uh, I think that indeed it's the um, the fact that we have this personalized approach. Um, uh, we, we focus more, more on SMEs than our competitors, um, which also makes that we need to be closer to the customers. We need to know them. Uh, they don't have very fancy systems. Uh, some of them even don't have an HR department. Okay. Um, so they need to be able to pick up the phone, give a call to one of our consultants, one of our internal people and say, okay, this is what I need. This is the type of person and we immediately know this is a person that would fit with that company culture. Um, so it's kind of a feeling, kind of that vibe. And um, we have customers that have been with us for 20, over 20 years uh, that are really confidants of where we are yeah. really their confidants. So in the end, you know, that part of the customer better, maybe better than the customer knows himself. Sometimes in, I think yeah. so, yeah. 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 <laughs> and on the other part, the business to consumer part, what would your candidates miss if, if, if you guys were not around? Because you're not the only one in the space. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm for simplicity. Uh, if you make things difficult, I also kind of start to get alarms in my head. So it's the same thing, personalized approach. Yeah. Same as with our B2B, it's also this personalized approach. We have a very friendly way. Uh, and, and I know that, for example, in Belgium, uh, we are referred to as the benchmark in uh, staffing. And because when people come into our office, we recognize that there is a person in front of us. It's not euros. It's not someone uh, who will bring us revenue. It's not someone who we really need to uh, uh, give a job. No, we will look for that right match. So it's the person that is in yeah, front of us. You try to give him or her the feeling that he or she is the center of, yeah. of what happens at that very yeah. moment. It's not the process or procedure. It's about him it's or her. It's the person. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, we already mentioned the C word, the COVID-19. Um, and this is not an interview about COVID-19. But we cannot, I mean, we cannot ignore Unavoidable. The, 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 that it happened. Um, what do you think, uh, what is in your space the biggest difference before COVID-19 and after COVID-19? Do you see a difference somewhere? Uh, I think it's still early days, of course. I think uh, we, we, we are not yet out of this crisis for the moment. So yeah. I think maybe we have the illusion that we are, but unfortunately we're not. Uh, so I think it's still early days. Now, what do we see is that, of course, some things will uh, will stay. Uh, and, and one of them is that, well, we were able to uh, adopt to digital much quicker because we had to. Yeah. Uh, we had a project internally to roll out Microsoft Teams and it would last until the 31st of December. Yeah. Uh, in three weeks, it was done. Yeah. So everyone is now uh, addicted to, uh, to Teams. Uh, so the, the digital has been uh, more quickly adopted and yeah. that is not going to go. But that's internally. Do you use the digital as well to yes. talk to candidates yes. or to talk to companies? Indeed. And are you going to do that in the future as well? We already started that years yeah. ago, uh, but uh, uh, what we are now doing is indeed uh, um, looking at how can we use these tools towards customers on a constant basis. And for example, um, normally we guide the candidate when they go for an interview. Our consultants, uh, in most of the cases, go with the candidate to the customer. Yeah. Now we try to do that already by video uh, or over video, uh, over FaceTime, WhatsApp. Yeah. So we are really now looking on how to integrate all these tools because there are so many tools and it's now. It's being more adapted by the yes. candidates, but also yeah. by the, the, the companies. Customers. By the customers. In the yeah. past, it was almost unimaginable that the customers would accept it. Yeah. And now it's more and more accepted yeah. that, uh, that indeed we use these tools to, to have the interviews. So there's a couple of good things that come out of this crisis as well. There's a yeah. lot of good things actually yeah. coming out of a crisis. I always say nothing as good as a good crisis to shake things up a little okay, bit. Okay, I, I love that. Yeah. Um, um, if you look at um, the, 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 let's say, 2021, 2022, what do you see as your biggest challenge? Or I know you as your biggest opportunity because you don't like... You like challenges because you see certain challenges yeah. as an opportunity. Well, it's always uh, when you are confronted with a challenge indeed or, or uh, a problem that you need to face, it's, it's always good to think in solutions. If you don't come with a solution, you're part of the problem is one of the yeah. things I say. Uh, so um, uh, it, it's, it's also a, a difficult question. What are the main things or, or challenges for 2021, 2022? I think it's just the overall economy. Um, how quickly will companies adapt to this uh, new situation? Uh, how, uh, how about consumer confidence? Uh, will a lot of companies go bust? Um, and there are some sectors that, that I am worried about. Uh, yeah, that and that to, has a direct impact on your turnover anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
So that's the biggest challenge. That's the biggest challenge. Of course, what we are now looking at is, of course, there are a couple of sectors that will struggle, but yeah. which sectors will thrive? And then uh, try to look at what are the opportunities we have uh, towards those sectors yeah. and, and try to look at so that. So you're developing new types of, of yeah. interactions or new type of, of, of customer segments yes, as well? indeed. indeed. Okay. Yeah. yeah, And working on a lot of digital solutions, which okay. I know is right up your alley. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you see any mega trend that is going to be of huge impact potentially on, on your type of business that you see developing, let's say, for the for the next decade in, in the 20s? Or, or is there nothing that you say, okay, this is really going to shake up our segment? Well, uh, of course, data, uh, and there's the big D word uh, and big D word. Uh, yeah. So uh, data is, is hugely important in our business. Yeah. So the way you collect data, the way you store it, the way you structure it, and then what you do with it is going to become more and more important in order to be able to deliver an even more personalized service to our customers and our candidates. So yeah. it's both ways again. Um, I think the more we are able to capture what the customer wants and that we are able to, to actually have that information in a structured way, the better we'll, we will be able to uh, to serve customers yeah. and candidates. Now, the holy trinity between big data, artificial intelligence and robotization, is that something that you say um, we'll deal with it when it happens or are you already very much into doing <laughs> what, that? What I, do know, you think? I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. maybe people don't know yeah, the answer. No, no, no. Yeah. But uh, uh, no, it's it's something we are really working on. Uh, it starts with uh, with getting the data in a structured way. We already have a lot of information or, or data, actually, raw data, uh, but it's not structured enough. So we're doing a lot of work. And I think that's the challenge for most companies. A, a lot of companies have a lot of data, yeah. but it's, it's just a, a massive bunch of garbage almost. So how do you sort it and recycle it uh, so that it becomes usable? Is that the biggest challenge? Challenge? That's the biggest challenge, to yeah. be quite honest. Not, not having the data, but no. knowing where they are and, and how to deal with it. And how to yeah. deal with it, how to structure it. Uh, and it's simple stuff. Huh? Uh, and I think a lot of people will recognize it when you talk about a date, a birth date. Do you first put the year and then the month and then the day? Uh, or do you put instead of the month, Jan, Feb? Uh, all those kind of things need to be uh, synchronized across your systems. Uh, and that is a lot of work to, to yeah, do. Yeah, and I think that that might be a challenge because you're, you're talking about very different companies. I know mm -hmm. that every company in your house of HR can work pretty independent. Yeah. So how do you get them all into collecting data and the same type of data and to, to, to be able to process all those data and to activate all those data, each for their specific... Well, I think if each company is able to structure the data for themselves, we're already a long way uh, uh, further because there's not that much cross-border going on for the moment. Okay. Uh, so it's within each... But is that something that you want to build? Well, what we are doing is we're building a lot of uh, applications that can be used on a mobile. And mobile is, by definition, much more structured because also the candidate owns their own data, yeah. uh, which is even more important if you want to keep it up to date. So the future is mobile. We really listen to you, Rick. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so this is also one of the things that we are uh, working on. So we have a lot of applications. You are also saying AI. So obviously, it starts with the data. Once you have that, AI uh, becomes a possibility. It's about processing all those data. Uh, yeah. And then uh, we also invested in a chatbot uh, technology technology in Romania, um, where we are already interviewing candidates in order to have a pre-screening of candidates uh, via Facebook, uh, shortly also over LinkedIn, uh, in order to get more structured data from those candidates. Wow, sounds uh, exciting. Are you, are you going to roll that uh, out all over Europe or, yeah? Well, first of all, of course, it's it's a benefit. Because there's, there's languages, so yeah. We have it in all languages okay, already. Great. So it's working yeah. in Portuguese, Romanian, Polish, you name yeah. it, uh, we've got it. Uh, so first of all, of course, this is a tool that we want to use and optimize within House of HR. Uh, we now developed a way of how to integrate the robot with the human being. Uh, so uh, uh, I think this is now working uh, quite well, and there is a, a, a trust uh, uh, built now between the robot and the human being, which is also part of the road that you need to take. Uh, so that sounds, is sounds very one. science fiction. You yeah, know, there's almost. trust between the robot and the human being. That's yeah. what you need. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we built that process, and now we will uh, actually copy that model uh, in the other countries 
in our own uh, group, uh, but Happy uh, Recruiter or Dora, uh, as the robot is named, yeah. uh, is also working for uh, companies which are outside of the group, which is also something very typical for us where we say, you know what, we don't need to limit ourselves uh, within the group. If we want to work with competition, yeah. that should work as well. So Dora will become our very personal assistant in uh, when we when we want to look for a job. Yes, yeah. indeed. Okay. Indeed. Is she also going to be the assistant for the companies or just uh, only for the candidates? Uh, it's actually it's a it's a, 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 an assistant for the companies because yeah. she's okay. actually acting as a consultant. All right. Yeah. So she's asking the questions like wow. how many years of experience do you have? Um, what is the salary you would like to earn? Um, those kind of questions are being yeah. asked to you. Yeah. Great. Um, we're already talking about platform companies, um, ecosystems. Um, you're very experienced in ecosystems because I see two types of ecosystems in your company. First of all, House of HR as such is an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. It's not one company, it's, it's an ecosystem of companies. Mm -hmm. um, that's exciting. The, the second is because you do matchmaking between candidates and companies and companies and candidates, you function as a platform, as an ecosystem mm -hmm. as well over yeah. there. Um, many companies that were not uh, ecosystems before now come to us and come to me and say, we want to become a platform company. We mm -hmm. want to become an ecosystem. Um, can you say something to them what they have to keep in mind when building an ecosystem, both internally, but also externally? I think you need to always start from your customer. Uh, and like you refer to it, it's the customer experience that, that counts and make it as easy and user-friendly as possible. Yeah. For the, so start uh, with the customer. It yeah. starts with that's the customer. Your, that's your anchor. That's, and even yeah. if you want to take it one step further, it maybe even starts with the customer paying the invoice. Because in our case, the candidate is not paying the invoice, it's the companies paying the invoice. Yeah. Uh, so start thinking about them and what is it that would really make their life a lot easier or what kind of frustrations are these customers So you start with, with the application that is a solution yes. to an actual problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and what are they doing in their day-to-day -day life? Or when you look for a job, what is the most frustrating thing that you can experience? Companies not calling you when yeah. you apply for a job or uh, having to wait too long before you get to know what your next steps are, not knowing what these ne next steps will be uh, or when they will be. So those are the kind of frustrations that if you can take those away, um, that are the things that will really bring added value and that will make So you're customers trying to, to avoid what the taxi business did and so they give give space to Uber, they didn't mm -hmm. focus on those customer frustrations, and then Uber yeah. came along, uh, solved all those customer issues, yeah. and then Uber conquered the world. So yeah. that's exactly what you want to avoid, yeah. or that's how you want to conquer the yeah. market. And then, of course, to become an ecosystem, what you need to think about is what are the things that is actually in my core uh, business, what is my core knowledge, uh, what do I know best? This is what you organize yourself. Yeah. Things where others are better, you just involve them as a partner and that's how you create and build. So you, you think about what do I bring to the table yeah. and what I want to take off the table yeah. and what can others bring to me yeah. and what can I give to the mm -hmm. others. And that's, I reckon that's not only money. Uh, no, it's actually when when we look, for example, and, and let's let's continue with the example of Dora. Dora is only taking a very small piece of the whole chain of the whole process of finding a job. It's the first pre-screening to actually determine is this a candidate I want to continue yeah. with. So it's a very small piece of the puzzle of the whole recruitment process. So. Um, in, in each of these processes, you will, or in each of these pieces, you will say, okay, what can, can I bring to the table? What we bring as an experienced company is a huge database of candidates yeah. and a huge database of customers. And we're also bringing uh, the whole um, physical process to the table. So it's, uh, in our case, it's not only a human process, it's a digital process, but the human part is yeah. also really important. And what you now see today with a lot of startups is that they only focus on the digital part and it's it's only this small piece of the puzzle. You cannot sell that. Yeah. Companies are not willing to buy uh, for their whole process 20 or 30 applications. They want to get it in one go. They only want to log on once shop, yeah. And, yeah. And, and not have it in small pieces. Yeah. So what we bring to the table is actually the glue between all these uh, pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. So really being the platform and yeah. then bring all those applications together yeah. into one platform. And then the human beings behind it. Yeah, Always exactly. Very yeah, important. very important. And start with the customer. That's, yes. uh, that's one thing I love. Um, you know, I'm, I'm 
obsessed by a, a, a new KPI, the net curiosity score. Um, I don't like companies that are starting from assumptions, um, especially now when times are changing very fast and very um, substantial. Um, I think that companies need to have more curiosity in their organizations. I know that your company is a pretty curious type of company. How do you enhance that curiosity in your organization? Um, always challenging, bringing new ideas and allowing new ideas and also allowing mistakes. I yeah. think that's probably one of the most important things. Uh, we try a lot of things and not everything works, but sometimes you have a huge uh, success. Um, for example, recently we launched an initiative called Share Jobs uh, because we have a lot of people in, in unemployment today. Uh, there was a lot of frustration in the government. Uh, we have so many people in unemployment. On the other hand, there's companies looking for people. Yeah. So we said, okay, we'll start a new uh, platform. We'll be the, the, the spider in the middle of the web and we will bring people uh, or companies companies that have maybe too many people for the moment together with companies that are uh, looking yeah. for people and we'll bring them together, take care of the whole admin process and so on and so on. So we'll be the spider in the, in the web uh, and, and those kind of opportunities, those kind of ideas are, uh, ideas are great. Will it ever become a one billion company? Probably not. But it's that kind of things that bring a new vibe in the company. Yeah. And, and one of, of my people uh, actually said, no, what do you like so much about, uh, about the company, about uh, Accent? And, uh, and uh, one of the comments of one of the employees was the fact that I always have something new to tell to our customers. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah, but it's about storytelling. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I have another one. Um, how do you... It's about leadership, uh, your, your CEO of the company, and, and we were touching leadership. Um, how do you see, how, have you seen a shift in, in leadership in the last, let's say, five years? And what shifts um, do you reckon that we will see in the next five years? Mm -hmm. Shift in um, type of leaders and type of leadership? Yeah, I think that I've always been uh, probably a little bit the old duck in the pond uh, uh, because I always wanted to be myself and, and uh, not start from I'm the boss and, and, and look at me. Uh, yeah. uh, so just be in the middle of it. And when you need to, you just roll up the sleeves and, and you, you really get uh, uh, going where, where help is needed. Uh, allowing to, to make mistakes is, is also one of those things that you need to explicitly say. And luckily, uh, more and more leaders also recognize that they are also only human beings and that also we can make mistakes. Uh, and I think this is uh, the type of leadership we, uh, we need more and more. And luckily, uh, when I, uh, I am at roundtables or, or with colleagues, uh, you see that that is being more and more accepted. The leaders where you need to refer to as sir or madam uh, and having that very formal uh, kind of approach to leadership where they are almost untouchable, yeah. uh, that is uh, luckily, I think, So it's more uh, about out. mindful leaders and about Vulnerable leadership. Yes. Yeah. 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 And being also very um, uh, open and honest. Uh, yeah. People uh, have never been stupid, and yeah. thinking they are is probably the biggest mistake uh, you can make. Uh, so, hiding things doesn't help because people will figure it out uh, at some point. So, it's yeah. better just to put it on the table. Yeah. I, I reckon that we're going to more hard type of companies, honest, ethical, authentic. Mm -hmm. Um, responsible yep. and transparent. And yep. I think that this is a new type of leadership. Yep. Now, we're at the end of the interview. Um, uh, I have, I, I want to give you the, the stage to give one short message to, first of all, your customers. What do you want to say to your customers? Is there a message that you want to give to your customers right now? Uh, it's a good question. And who yeah. are my customers, of course? Yeah, so, okay, okay. You, but, can, you uh, can talk to candidates and to customers or potential customers. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe the message is if, if you really want a personalized approach and you want to feel someone really cares uh, about you or your own company, uh, yeah. uh, just come to us. Uh, House of HR will help you. And by the way, HR is uh, going to become more and more important. Uh, yeah. It's always been treated, uh, HR, as a little bit the department that that does comp compensation and benefits, and that's it. Uh, but your whole resource planning, uh, because maybe we think that there are enough people now eh, with more unemployment, this yeah. is what we all think, but in the longer term, uh, people will become a scarce good. So treat your people well uh, and, uh, and, and pay more attention yeah. to HR. And is it people or talent that will become a, a scarce good? Both. Well, it's yeah. both. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, 
any message that we want to give to the people that make your company? Because the company is people. They're the best. You're yeah. great. And thanks a lot for everything. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, now, a difficult one, maybe a difficult one. Um, it, it, just imagine that there was your government, the governments, mm -hmm. or the governments. Is there any message that you want to give to them? Is there anything that they can do to not really help you as a company, but help society? Uh, I think also being more transparent uh, as a government body, uh, because I think uh, due to the crisis we've all uh, uh, experienced, unfortunately, uh, how untransparent our government is and, and how difficult Belgium is as a state uh, to, uh, to make decisions. Um, so probably sit together, um, forget party politics, but think about what is good for the country. Um, and also remember that if you have one euro, you can only spend it once, so spend it wisely. Okay, and any last remark and then we... I, I wanna, uh, before you go to the last yeah. thing, Mark, I want to thank you very much for this interview. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I learned a lot. And I think that companies need to talk to you, not only for their staffing, but also to learn about ecosystems. I, can, yeah. I think they can learn a lot about how you both run it, House of HR, but also how you do that matchmaking in using big data, already using a chatbot to build that ecosystem. Any last remark, any last message that you want to share? Well, I also want to thank you, Rick, for the opportunity. Uh, I think it's uh, it's great to be able to talk about uh, something you love. Uh, and I love House of HR. And, uh, and I think that's the message. I love the company. I love the people in it. Yeah. And that probably uh, uh, radiates towards our customers and candidates. So, okay. Um, Rika, thank you very, very much. Thank you.